Hey guys, welcome back. Reese and Ben here at Pursuing Other Arts. And today in the video, we are getting back to doing more interpretations of the techniques. So today we are back doing Le Jeu de la H, the play of the X, and uh, it's really great to get back to it. It's been a while since we've done some techniques. Uh, I had a uh, sudden change of residency. My landlord decided they needed the house for something else, and uh, I had to uh, find a house, buy a house, move all of my stuff, and uh, we're still in the process of getting set up, so um, it's a little uh, little messy here still, but um, we're actually able to get some practice in and, uh, you know, at a new place. Yeah, so we had to do that within a whole, like a month, yep. to find a place, pack up everything, so we were preoccupied with that, and we use uh, his place to do harness practice at, so that was kind of a priority. Yep. So, but um, we will got back to the new place and we got to back to doing some training. So yep. you guys will see some more interpretations of Le Jeu La Ash now. Paragraph 44. If he comes as above said face first, you can give him a thrust with the tail and the face so that he raises his axe. And if he holds it away from him, you can place the tail of your axe under his demi ash right against his neck and push it. If you do not find your advantage to push, pass the said tail over his head and take him from the other side of his neck to pull him backwards. And if you fail so that you cannot push him, from there you pull as you move backwards and you will encounter no hindrance. Paragraph 45. If it is a said hold on you, you can push by means of Demi Ash against his neck or his shoulder and push him back from you. Paragraph 46. If he counters you in this manner, you must obey and draw back. And as you do so, you must cross the said tail of your axe over his right arm, giving him a great jolt to make him lose the big end. Alright guys, that concludes the video. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, as always, we really enjoy working through this treatise. Uh, it's one of our favorites as of late. And uh, we're going to discuss a little bit about what we learned along the way. So the first one was paragraph 44, in which you uh, Ben thrusted at me to gain an opening, and then he put his tail underneath uh, my neck and pushed me. That was pretty simple, that one was pretty straightforward. Uh, but what's interesting is just be, being that I'm I carry it high, that creates uh, a window for him to place that cue against my neck. So, and then the pressure, uh, when he's putting pressure in, he's put in between my legs and just caused me to go off balance. So, yeah, I find in executing the technique, um, obviously the window is important. You got to get them to open up. They have to reach their hands high and away from them to give you the big enough hole to stick your cue into. Um, once you gain purchase on the neck, you have to pretty aggressively come in and push backwards between their legs the way they're standing so you can cause them to be destabilized. Hopefully they fall. Uh, it was the, obviously the initial hope that the technique won't happen. Uh, if it doesn't, um, then uh, there's uh, the follow-up. Yeah, so paragraph 44, uh, which I found was probably the coolest part of this, is that when 
he goes to the first one, doesn't work, he switch, they, has it go over my, my, my neck, and then comes around the other side. Now what's cool about this one is that by putting pressure uh, to my left side, we push this way, my body naturally wants to correct itself and bring it back to center. In which case, he comes around the other side and, and works on that momentum and further assists me to throw me over. Yeah, it's something we commonly see in the fight books. Uh, as with most martial arts, you're going to try to manipulate the person's uh, energy. You're going to make them react away and then take advantage of the way they react uh, after the fact. So given the first push doesn't work because you're trying to push them and giving a lot of force, they will naturally resist and try to correct. That's when that quick change of dropping your hand and letting that cue pop over and yanking the opposite direction, they've already corrected for you. So your pull doesn't take nearly as much energy on your part to yank them the other direction. Again, hopefully, you've done this and surprised them and they misstep and fall. Yeah. And then uh, 46 was where my counter to him is to place my demi ash against his uh, shoulder or neck. Uh, what's neat about this one is that since I'm on top, uh, he's below me, so he has, I've negated any kind of structure he would to throw me. Yep. Yeah, and it, it also works well because if I've pushed and it didn't work and I've transitioned to pull and he realizes it's happening, even if he's falling and he extends his arms into structure onto my neck, he brace, actually braces against me to keep from falling, which then pushes me backwards. I don't have the strength to lift him. Um, so I have to back up, in which case, if he pushes aggressively enough, I'll miss my footing and potentially fall, or at the very least, he makes me retreat away from him so he can regain his guard. Yeah, so often in, in Lejeune we see uh, where if something were to happen, so you screw up or something, mm -hmm. you just simply get out of there and return to your guard. Yeah. So, uh, but then there's a counter to my counter, of mm -hmm. course, in which he uh, comes around the other side to my, my right hand, He's in the back of my axe. So when he comes back, he breaks against my thumb, which we covered that in a previous video, mm -hmm. and then he can do a tour de bras or otherwise, mm -hmm. as I suggest. Yeah, I find this technique works best with uh, timing. Uh, if you time it with their step while they're pushing on you, um, as they take the first step and give you a good hard push, you have to start to retreat, and as they continue their pressure, that's when you transition over and turn rapidly and smack your axe into their hand. And when you catch them with that step, they tend to worry more about not falling and their hand comes off the axe easier. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as their hand comes off the axe, I'm already in motion to turn and bring my uh, maul or my around and give them a crack in the head. Yeah, what was really interesting with this one is that, uh, again, me pushing forward, uh, that further assisted me to get un unbalanced. Because once he, I'm going forward, he breaks my, my grip there, and I'm going this way and buys him time to get back and, uh -huh. and perform a strike on me. Yeah, in Lejeune, it's very common uh, that you do not try to strike your opponent until they are defenseless. Um, mm -hmm. You know, be it their axe is not in a threatening position, or you've controlled it or taken it away from them, and they have no way to, uh, to retort to what you're about to do. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of it is where you, like I said, to stabilize them because you want to buy time to where you can launch an attack with the maul. So we see that all throughout Lejeune, mm -hmm. he, he you know, says in the beginning that you know, that's the dangerous end, and you know, people tend to focus on that more mm -hmm. when doing strikes, but you know, through a majority of it, it's, a lot of it is just controlling your opponent's axe mean, by means of the cue, mm -hmm. the tail getting the back of the axe, or using the demi-ash you know, like we see here. So, um, but yeah, guys, um, we really liked working through these again. It was really great to get back into studying Lejeune. Uh, we hope to be doing some more in the future, as well as uh, you're going to be seeing some more training content soon. So um, we got our, uh, another Deed of Arms coming up here in May. Um, last year we was a Deed of the Swan Knight, so the same type of tournament is happening this time around, and we hope to get lots of content for you. Uh, covering the Deed of Arms itself, and hopefully I get to uh, talk to some new people yeah, and stuff there too. I believe the theme this year is the, the Green Knight. So, yeah, uh, that'll be it. The story of the Green Knight, so, uh, which is always a really cool one. So, but um, yeah, that includes it. Um, th uh, guys, we really appreciate you, uh, you guys sticking to the channel. Uh, by last month or so, it was our two year anniversary, yep. which is super awesome. So, uh, we've had a great time, it's been a great adventure, met lots of really cool people through doing this and we look forward to seeing where this goes in the future. 
So uh, special thanks to our Patreon supporters yep. for supporting the channel. You guys are truly awesome in making this allow us to do this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. We'll, we really, really enjoy it. So, yep. um, but uh, that's it. So guys, we um, we will see you guys in the coming video. And expect more content covering with you and more training and deep. So take care.